Good evening and welcome to NTD UK News. I'm Stuart Lees. Here are today's top stories. A new report says during the first year of the pandemic, nearly 20,000 people missed being diagnosed with cancer. And it could take up to 10 years to clear the backlog. Climate activists block the port of Dover. The Transport Secretary says he's seeking fresh legal action. And fishermen in the southwest reel in an unfamiliar catch. Atlantic bluefin tuna, one of the world's most expensive and sought-after fish, are back in Cornish waters. Delays to cancer treatment since the pandemic and lockdowns, a new report estimates during the first year of the pandemic, nearly 20,000 people missed being diagnosed with the disease. And today's Jen Well brings us this report. Delays in cancer diagnosis could mean it's too late for thousands of people to receive treatment. A report says in the first year of the pandemic, Around 19,500 people in England haven't been diagnosed because of missed referrals. The Institute for Public Policy Research says that it could take between one year or a decade to clear the backlog. They say this depends on whether there will be an increase in the number of cancer treatments. Do you think it's realistic that these cancer treatments can be increased? I think it's realistic we can get there, provided nothing else happens with COVID. The real problem for the world, if you don't know what's going to happen next, will there be another mutant, rather like Delta? Will that change the way the infectivity and so on goes? Will it crash healthcare facilities? At the moment, Britain certainly is in a very good place. There are a number of admissions every day with COVID. It's less than 1,000. It's been less than 1,000 for the last few weeks. It's been dropping. There were 700 in the last 24 hours. And that means that the health service is not being plagued by COVID. We can get on with the other business of the healthcare. If a new variant came that caused more illness and, for example, broke through the vaccination, then we could be in trouble again. And that, that's the worry. So we don't really know what the final outcome is going to be. We'll have a better idea by the end of winter because obviously COVID is worse in winter than in summer. It comes amid concerns that patients are missing face-to-face -face appointments with their doctor. Need to examine somebody or do a Earlier this week, the chair of the Royal College of General Practitioners said face-to-face -face appointments are important when they're needed, but he said they're not needed for everyone. The Prime Minister has said patients are entitled to see a GP in person in case deadly symptoms are missed in remote appointments. Jane Worrell, NTD News, London. BP and ExxonMobil have closed some of their petrol stations in the face of lorry driver shortages, disrupting their fuel delivery networks. A government spokesperson said people should continue buying petrol as normal. NTD's Malcolm Hudson has the details. BEP has temporarily closed some of its petrol stations. The ongoing shortage of lorry drivers has presented an industry-wide challenge to the fuel industry. BP told the government in a meeting last Thursday that the company's ability to transport fuel from refineries to petrol stations was faltering. BP's head of UK retail, Hannah Hoffer, had stressed the urgency of the situation, describing it as bad, very bad, according to a report by ITV News. She added that BP had two-thirds of the normal fuel stock levels required for smooth operations and that the level was declining rapidly. Esso owner ExxonMobil said a small number of the Tesco Alliance petrol stations have also been impacted. The Petrol Retailers Association said some sites are suffering delays, particularly in London and South East England. They recommend that motorists keep enough fuel in their tank to reach alternative filling stations in the rare instance that fuel is not available at the first one they visit. A government spokesperson has said, There is no shortage of fuel in the UK and people should continue to buy fuel as normal. They added that action has already been taken to increase the supply of HGV drivers, including streamlining the process for new drivers and increasing the number of driving tests. Malcolm Hudson, NTD News. Britain is in dire need of tens of thousands of lorry drivers. Amid higher pay and rise in demand, more people are training to be a trucker. Here's NTD's Costa Menes with the story. 
Britain has a problem. There aren't enough lorry drivers. Tens of thousands of truckers are needed. As the threat of Christmas shortages looms, the government scrambles to lure people into what has long been seen as an underpaid and underappreciated job. National Driving Centre is seeing a 20% increase in trainees. It's absolutely a driver's market right now, um, and they know they're in demand, and it's sort of turned into a bit of a, a bidding auction for, for lorry drivers at the moment. Kadeen Lubin Hewitt is one of those who started thinking about a career move. The coach driver was made redundant during the pandemic and went back to driving London buses. But in between the time I got made redundant and became a bus driver again, I thought about getting a lorry license, which will fully take me out of um, dealing with passengers and, and just focus on physical and manual labor. Lubin Hewitt hopes to work for a big supermarket or delivery company. He says he doesn't worry about the loneliness or stress of the job. I'm expecting a more of a 40% a rise in pay. Like, it'll go up like about a good five pounds per hour more. In an attempt to ease the shortage, the government removed part of the driving test. Bolton has concerns about the safety of skipping that step. Going from a car license to a class one vehicle, potentially six and a, 16 and a half meters long, 44 tons in weight, is a massive gap um, and it's a massive jump. Several key factors led to the trucking crisis. The pandemic and Brexit prompted some European drivers to head home. The government closed the loophole that many drivers use to keep tax payments down. And lockdowns halted driver testing, stopping the flow of new truckers. Now a driver for a big supermarket can make more money than teachers, police officers and even lawyers. Cost MNS, NTD News. The government is seeking further legal action after climate activists blocked the port of Dover this morning. Transport Secretary Grant Schaap said on Twitter, we won't tolerate reckless behavior on motorways or ports. Kent police arrested 39 activists from the group Insulate Britain. It comes as the group recently started to sit in front of vehicles on the M25 and glue themselves to the motorway. One man called into LBC Radio to say his mother was left partially paralyzed from a stroke because of the holdup of traffic by the activists. The government secured a court ruling on Tuesday against the activists. It means they could face jail if they block the M25 again. A former Paralympic athlete who superglued himself to the roof of a plane during an Extinction Rebellion protest has been sentenced today to a year in prison. Double gold medalist James Brown glued his right hand to the plane at London City Airport in October 2019 before wedging his mobile phone in the plane's door to prevent it from closing. Prosecutors said he caused disruption to more than 300 passengers and cost the airline £40,000. Brown, who has been blind since birth, denied one count of causing a public nuisance. The judge said the right to protest does not entitle you to cause major widespread disruption to a major airport simply because you think it is the right thing to do. The judge also told Brown there is no entitlement to more lenient treatment because he was protesting about the environment. The seas in the southwest of England have recently seen a return of bluefin tuna. This is the first time the fish has been seen in UK waters in decades. Here's Entity's Eddie Aiken with more on this. Atlantic bluefin tuna is one of the world's most expensive and sought-after fish that's seen around Britain for 60 years. It has returned to the southwest. The government has recruited 40 fishermen to track tuna numbers by catching and tagging them. John Mayer has the rare opportunity of reeling in a bluefin tuna. It's the first time I've ever caught a bluefin tuna, yeah. How's it feel? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. To do it in British waters, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's something I thought I'd never do. The tuna's return is positive news. Confused scientists are working with Cornish fishermen to find out why. Sophie Phillips is from the Centre for Environment, Fisheries and Aquaculture Science. She says bluefin tuna gradually left British waters due to availability of prey. So one of the 
factors could be uh, climate factors, um, so increased water temperatures, it could be an increase in the numbers and distribution of the bait fish which they predate upon, um, or, or other factors that are as yet unknown. The Cornwall fishermen taking part in the study hope they will be given license to fish for bluefin, bolstering the area's economy. Eddie Aitken, NTD News. This week sees the return of London Coffee Festival. High-end coffee machine suppliers say the pandemic has seen sales soaring as lockdown barristers attempt to recreate their favorite coffee shop brews at home. Entity's John Robson brings us more on this. London Coffee Festival returns this weekend for its 10th year. For home coffee machine companies, the pandemic wasn't bad for business. As the UK was locked down, people could not visit their favorite coffee shops and often had extra money in their pocket. Grant Chippendale works for Swiss high-end coffee machine maker Dura. During lockdown, we saw an unprecedented demand for home-use coffee machines. Um, we looked at our figures for last year and we, we approximated it was around 23% in terms of an increase in sales during that one single year. Top of the range models cost up to £4,000. DeLonghi is a high-volume coffee machine maker with top-of-the-range models costing £1,000. Michael Strickland says they save money in the long run that would have been spent in the coffee shop. You bought this machine and every time you make a coffee, you're about 10 pence, roughly around about that. So it is an investment, but you'll get a really, really good coffee shop quality coffee out of it. Italian brand Bieppi makes elegant mid-range machines for the commercial market, but moved into domestic machines during lockdown. Since the lockdown, basically, we uh, tenfolded uh, our uh, production uh, regarding the domestic machines. For this year, we have uh, still a couple of months left, and also for the next, the next one. So, booming. Conti is a new coffee machine maker, specializing in highly customizable machines. This colorful model is inspired by a limited edition Volkswagen Golf car. Director Chris Austin understands that a coffee machine is an ornament and kitchen focal point. Having a commercial kind of customized mixer, like a KitchenAid mixer on the stand, everyone, well, a lot of people have those, but it's not really a, a talking point. With a coffee machine, you're, you're entertaining, you're engaging, you're, 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 you're making something for your guests. So you get to play coffee shop. Austin says as things are returning to normal, coffee shops will become busier. I think there's a lot of home beer brewers at the moment as well. And eventually I think the pubs will start to get busier and busier and busier, um, as will the coffee shops. I don't think you'll ever replace the coffee shop. It's not just machine makers experiencing good lockdown sales in the domestic coffee market. Syrups and sauces are also becoming more popular. Uh, so I think like adding a little bit of indulgence, so whether that's with a syrup or adding a little bit of sauce to your like coffee or homemade frappuccino, whatever it might be, um, yeah, that's, I think that's a big area that's growing. London Coffee Festival opens until Sunday and features 250 artisan coffee makers. Latte artists like the six-time UK champion Dan Tamong are also giving demonstrations of their works of milky art. Joanne Robson, NTD News. Still to come, many are now homeless on Spain's La Palma Island following the volcanic eruption. But one home named the Miracle House has been spared from destruction. That and more after the break. Central European leaders in a joint declaration on Thursday said immigration should not be the answer to the European Union's declining birth rate. They met at a summit on demographics and family values in Hungary. And today's Cost MNS has more on this. Conservative leaders from Central Europe expressed concern about falling birth rates in the Western world and discussed ways to reverse the trend. They spoke at the Budapest Demographic Summit on Thursday. First held in 2015, it's a forum devoted to demographics and family values. Well, everyone is talking uh, about the human capital. This has become very, very popular phrase during last decades. 
but there is no human capital without humans. And so many countries are running out of people. So demography is a mega issue. It is about the future of our countries. It is about the future of every country because there is no country without people. According to World Bank figures, the EU's birth rate in 2019 stood at 1.5, live births per woman. In 1964, it was 2.6. To prevent a decline in population numbers, 2.1 is considered necessary. 20 years ago, Europe participated in, participated in a world growth rate with 20%. Today, it's around 10%. Within five years, it's going to be 7%. Speaking about population and number of inhabitants, within 30 years, Nigeria will have just one African country, will have more inhabitants than the entire European Union. The leaders signed a joint declaration saying immigration should not be the answer to the EU's declining birth rate. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence also spoke at the event. The leaders of government who are gathered here and the leaders of faith know. Strong families make strong communities. And strong communities make strong nations. Prime Minister Viktor Orban described how Hungary has used the state to shape demographic processes by restricting migration and using tax breaks and other instruments to ensure that having children is beneficial economically for families. Kost Hermanes, NTD News. Ukraine's parliament passed a law on Thursday to order oligarchs to register and stay out of politics, a day after an attempt to kill a top aide to the president. Lauren Anthony reports. Ukraine's parliament passed a law on Thursday that will force oligarchs to register and stay out of politics. It comes a day after the attempted assassination of a top aide to President Volodymyr Zelensky. Serhi Shafir's car was sprayed with gunfire by unidentified individuals as he travelled between two villages outside the capital, Kiev. Zelensky's team have said the attack could have been a response to the reform. […] The law formally defines an oligarch and gives authorities the power to designate individuals who meet the criteria. Oligarchs would be forbidden from financing political parties or taking part in privatizations. Top officials, including the president and his staff, would also be required to declare any dealings they had with oligarchs. Zelensky says the law is necessary to protect Ukraine from powerful businessmen who have corrupted its political system and wielded influence over the media for decades. His opponents are skeptical and fear it will be applied selectively to concentrate more power in the president's hands. Shafir was unharmed on Wednesday, though his driver was wounded. Police are now searching for the weapon and interviewing possible witnesses, according to an Interior Ministry spokesperson. Zelensky has vowed to tackle corruption and curb oligarchs' influence since he won a landslide election in 2019. Volcanic lava on Spain's La Palma Island destroyed almost 400 buildings. But one home, named the Miracle House, has been spared from destruction. Engineer Eddie Aiken brings us the details. A volcano on Spain's La Palma Island continues to spew out lava on Friday, five days after it first erupted. The lava has destroyed almost 400 buildings, including many homes and forced 6,000 people to flee. Amid the destruction, a single house sitting on a small stretch of land has been spared by the lava. Spanish photographer Alfonso Escalero first captured the home that social media users named Miracle House. The BBC reports a Danish retired couple own the house but haven't visited since the eruption. The couple are relieved it's still standing. Some of their friends have lost everything. Eddie Aitken, NTD News. Surging natural gas prices across Europe could hinder the economic recovery in Spain, where small businesses are crucial to local employment. Recent indicators pointed to a solid revival of the economy 
but this is now under threat. Surging natural gas prices across Europe could hinder an economic recovery in Spain. Energy bills have more than doubled in European countries as gas prices rocket. It's due to low storage stocks and other factors. Analysts say Spain is particularly vulnerable to the spike in household fuel bills due to many being on flexible tariffs, with small businesses particularly exposed to the pain. They account for over 61% of Spanish economic activity and 71% of total employment. Myra Maldonado runs a dry cleaners in Madrid. This has affected us a lot because our machines have to be working at all times, she says. We can't depend on a timetable, and this affects us because our machines use up a lot of energy and we can't find another way to do things. Spain's gross domestic product shrank to a historic 10.8% in 2020. Recent indicators pointed to a solid revival of the economy, but the recovery so far has been heavily dependent on spending by consumers, who are now facing 35% annual rises in their power bills. The Bank of Spain, in line with the European Central Bank, insists the rise is temporary and will not affect the economy. Last week, the government introduced an emergency package, reducing taxes and putting a cap on gas prices. Italy and Greece face similar problems and are eyeing measures. But for some small businesses already battered by lockdowns, it may be too little too late. Catalan separatist leader Carles Puigdemont was detained on Thursday by police in Sardinia. Madrid wants him extradited to face charges of sedition. Flora Bradley Watson reports. Catalan separatist leader Carles Puigdemont was detained on Thursday by police on the Italian island of Sardinia. Puigdemont's office said he was in the city of Algaro to attend the Adifolk International Exhibition when he was stopped by border police. The former head of the Catalan government has been the subject of a European arrest warrant issued by Spain. Madrid wants him extradited to face charges of sedition, claiming he helped organize a 2017 independence referendum deemed illegal by Spanish courts. As an elected member of the European Parliament since 2019, Puigdemont had enjoyed immunity from prosecution and had been living in self-imposed exile in Belgium. However, in March this year, the European Parliament stripped him of that immunity. Puigdemont's lawyer confirmed his detention in a tweet, adding that it was made on the basis of a European arrest warrant from 2019, which he said had previously been suspended. Catalonia's 2017 referendum brought on Spain's biggest political crisis in decades and was followed by a unilateral declaration of independence by the Catalan Parliament. That prompted the central government to impose direct rule from Madrid and authorities to arrest separatist leaders. But the issue hasn't gone away. Earlier this month, thousands of people turned out in Barcelona to call once again for independence. And finally, a French company offers customers a unique flying experience in a microlight accompanied by a flock of geese. Entity's John Robson has the story. High up in the sky with the Alps way down below, soaring in the air, surrounded by geese. This is an experience Frenchwoman Nathalie Maniglier wished to tick off her bucket list. She has a congenital illness and can only see in one eye. With her sight fading, she hoped to witness this incredible view while she still can. Formidable, formidable. Incredible. There is a feeling of freedom. It was just magical. To see them flying in formation was really great. There's lots of emotion. Pilot Dominique Cruciani first flew alongside birds when he was hired as a pilot on a documentary film about bird migration. Last year, he decided to turn that experience into a commercial venture. C'est magique. It's magic. Everyone we take with us are very moved after the flights. They forget everything and feel like a migratory bird. Cassandra Schneider is in charge of training the geese. She got these birds as hatchlings. They took her for their mother and began following her everywhere. My biggest challenge when they were little was to not crash them because they were following me so closely and they were so little. Once the geese grew flight feathers, Schneider started going up in a micro light, first for a one-minute flight, then for twice the time the next day. The geese followed. 
Now aged around three months, the geese can shadow the micro light for around an hour, flapping hard when it climbs, then gliding in its slipstream when it cruises. The advantage of a delta wing is that it sets off an atmospheric depression on the upper part, and the bird understands that when it stays in this position, it can rest. It doesn't exert more effort, it's carried by the wing. That's just magical. Schneider says when the geese reach about three years old, they will help them return to the wild. Delta Evasion charges customers about £400 for a flight shadowed by geese. Joanne Robson, NTD News. That's the news for today, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Stuart Lees. Thank you for watching our daily news show on YouTube. You can also watch our other programming on Channel 190 on Sky TV or on Freeview via Channel Box on Channel 271. In the meantime though, please give this video a like and hit subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.